Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends. Louise Penny's latest book, A World of Curiosities, is packed with mayhem, murder of women engineers, child sex trade, coded items, witches, locked rooms, psychological secrets. We even see Chief Inspector Gamache fumble a bit to control his temper and the emotional growth of his second in command, Beauvoir. It's all here. Let's welcome my guest, April Ladinsky. She is one who never misses a clue. <laughs> Welcome, it's so good to have you yeah, back. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got an exciting book, we've got good food, and we, we've got so much to talk with, but let's start, first of all, with our menu. What are we going to prepare? Right. I'm gonna um, start with a very Canadian celebration, and that is a stovetop pudding made with maple syrup. This is local to the Michiana area, um, but over 80% of the uh, maple syrup comes from Canada, uh, spiced with some cinnamon and uh, easy to make and a very cozy uh, oh, a very cozy dessert. Great. There are a lot of scenes in this cute little bistro in Absolutely. Three Pines. And, and I'm making a salmon tray because uh, Gamache and his wife love to invite people for lunch or dinner, they say come after church for dinner, and they'll have they'll have salmon. It's all very cozy and very. She makes it very easy, doesn't she? Well, and that house becomes a character in the in, film. In, Their in, space yes. is a place that that is invaded, is full of clues, and a lot of the plot, uh, which we will not reveal all of, uh, unfolds not all of in that space. Exactly. So I will start with my salmon here, but we've got a lot of backstories and origin stories. And actually, it is a book that stand alone. I mean, I've read some of them, not in order, but tell us what we mean by origin stories. Yeah, I think one of the pleasures of this book is that if you're new to Louise Penny, um, you have the satisfaction of learning uh, about the origins of many of the relationships. Uh, if you have read all of Louise Penny's books, like I have and many you of have. her fans have, there are reveals that are very interesting about the uh, the case that brings together uh, uh, Gamache and uh, um, Beauvoir, um, we understand that a little bit more. It's the origin story of uh, a murder that haunts the whole book, that haunts um, yeah. Gamache's career. And it's also the origin story of Three Pines and a yes. wonderful story about women exiled and women triumphing. So lots of lots of Ooh, wonderful origins there. There's lots there. in here and it just makes everybody want to go up to Canada to find <laughs> Three Pines. <laughs> it and, sure does. <laughs> and I, I think she's an amazing writer and uh, uh, she took a, a breath, I guess. She's writing now with, back again with her uh, usual energy and is uh, we're so glad. We're so glad she's back doing great books. Now, I am going to uh, put out my salmon, then I'm chopping onion. I have parboiled some Brussels sprouts and potatoes, and we will put a little um, olive oil on this and put it in the oven for about, oh, half an hour, 40 minutes. That's why I parboiled the potatoes. Sometimes things cook unevenly, and you have to uh, take the food out, the open the oven and put the salmon in at the last minute and because you're cooking the potatoes and uh, the onion and, and the Brussels sprouts much longer. So uh, we're talking about some of these these scenes and these themes. They're, they're, I don't know where she gets all these themes, but we're building to we're going to build to a climax. Uh, in the end of this book, you won't want to miss that ending. Um, well, and the psychological um, story here is more complicated, I would say, than in other books. So we get the oh. um, yet one more origin story, and that is um, his relationship to the psychopathic killer, uh, John Fleming, who is a master of disguise. And one of the themes of the book, which you can actually see on the cover, is 
the sort of challenge of uh, the, the clutter of so many details, so many characters modeled after a painting that comes to play a very large role in the book. And At that the is, end of it, it's sort mm -hmm. of like another theme introduced when they take a wall down and they find this picture. And, and, and Gamash is very, uh, very worried about uh, finding another person who is out to threaten him. And we have that in the back of the story too and the worry. And that is a lot to worry about. <laughs> oh my gosh. And the return of the children who have had a terrible childhood. Their mother has been murdered and she groomed them for, for the sex trade. And oh, that, that was to me the saddest part. It is a very, I, I think readers should be warned that it has some very heavy themes. I think the, um, you know, the theme of redemption is also certainly something that we see here. The, yeah. the phrase, ça va bien aller, everything will be okay, plays again and again, again and again in these scenes. And sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. And That's so, right. And I always, I always find that phrase after a real, when somebody's had a very difficult event yeah. in their life and somebody says, oh, well, you'll be all right, you'll okay. be okay. Not knowing they're gonna suffer, you know, for right. six months, a year, years maybe. Oh, it's gonna be all right. I mean, I got a little uh, tired of that, but at the same time, some people do believe that and it does work sometimes, doesn't well, it? Well, you bring up an interesting point and that is that the film or the, the book is sort of mixed, a mix of science and belief of si in science and engineering but also magic. There are people oh. who uh, utter sort of magic incantations like rabbit, rabbit, rabbit for good luck. We see witches, uh, possibly witches, maybe just very intelligent women who know how to um, work with herbs and know how to heal people. Um, oh. <laughs> and we see Gamosh who usually uses his intellect kind of fall to his heart. We see him weakened in some of these scenes. And he ways. really is. And yeah. sometimes you think, is this the beginning of the end? Is he, and is he uh, kind of wear, uh, wearing out and should he be doing something else? And uh, in any case, he sticks with it. And uh, I'm putting yeah, a little- It takes both Beauvoir and Gimosh to solve this mystery and other people as well, as well as Ren Marie, his wonderful wife. Oh, I love that character. She, she is so cool, isn't mm -hmm. she? She's just, she's about ready to have her throat slit. And she just looks at her husband with big eyes and you know, what? Oh, I, I just couldn't believe it, how strong she was. And uh, the story's, the story ends in a, in a positive. However, we don't know what she's going to do with the next line in her history of books, because the main character, the nasty, nasty one, is finally wiped out. And uh, we won't see him again. I think. We'll see. <laughs> the, the master of disguise it's is that, probably the, the yeah, key it's, there. It's that kind of, of, of a story. And I liked it very much. I've read three of her books and you've read all of them. Well, and, she got me through the pandemic. I read them in order and was very absorbed. I think even for people who may not really appreciate um, murder mysteries or crime novels, which I don't, the, the psychological complexity and the sweetness of the relationships and mentoring between Gimash and Beauvoir. And in this book, really Beauvoir mentors Gimash in ways that I think are, really speak to what you as just he said. Gets, as he's mm -hmm. a little more seasoned, mm -hmm. yes, indeed. Well, I'm going to put my salmon dish in the oven and it will cook, probably cook about 40 minutes. And it's a wonderful dish. She doesn't take very long and she serves it for lunch with friends. This is Ren Mar Marie, Ren Queen Mary, yes. isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah, she's Queen Mary. Uh, so the action, did we talk about John Fleming at all? Well, uh, we can a little bit. He's the psychopathic killer that is um, seems to be behind this first murder that we see of Clotilde Ar um, Arsenault, the mother of these children. Yes. And then he sort of disappears and then, but kind of haunts the text and then seems to leave his calling card in various ways. And Armand Guimache knows him well enough to know that some of these mysterious things that are happening, the hidden painting, the invasion of his home are in some way related to this man. And 
Um, but we don't know where he is, and Gamache doesn't know where he is. No, that's the thing, and he he terrorizes everybody by not his presence, but his non-presence. How are you doing here? Uh, well, you know, as with any stovetop pudding, you have to use both science and a little bit of magic. I'm going to say rabbit, 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 that rabbit, this will rabbit. thicken. That's one we hear <laughs> in I the book. But I believe. So it is thickened with four egg yolks and some cornstarch to stabilize it. Um, then you finish it with just a little bit of butter. Well, um, you're going to have to finish it pretty quickly. <laughs> Tempest Fugit, or Fugit. <laughs> I, yes, I, I believe. I, I, just want, I just want you to get through the pudding, uh, and um, it... And then it, it will chill for a little while. It so. will chill, mm -hmm. and then you add some cream, I think. Some whipped cream yes. at the top. And I will say also, if you have really nice cinnamon, I have some um, Vietnamese cinnamon from Epic Spices in Chicago. Oh. This is the kind of dish to really use your very best cinnamon. It's really I've heard about Epic it. that it's very, very good. It's a tiny little, uh, tiny little shop run by a family, and it's really oh. worth visiting. So. Well, let's see now. We've we've uh, we've talked about uh, what what's happening here toward the end of the book. We won't reveal what actually happens. And as most books written now. It wraps up in two pages. It does wrap up very quickly. Quickly, quickly. Mm -hmm. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I wish it had been a little bit more like this through the book. But uh, I got bogged down in certain sections where the, the description went on and on. And I, I think you have to get this in your in your glass, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, I will in just a moment here. The, um, I think the, all of those details are... You know, Louise Penny is putting us in the same position as Armand Dimash, that we sort of don't know what the what the red herrings are, what the meaningful... Yes, um, and he is upset in this book. He really is. It seems even the two I read before, he was more in control. And I, I, I hope he gets a grip again. Well, I think you're right that he's aging. And, of course, one of the things that we really enjoy about Dimash is that he's not just an intellect. He um, has a real heart, and yeah. especially for children, and so that's exactly... Children and his wife, mm -hmm. yes. He's and a... so uh, Fleming knows exactly how to get him, and it's quite yeah. painful. Well, listen, we've, we've wrapped up our, our first section here. We thank you for watching so far, and uh, you're going to... We'll chill let, these, you'll and they'll be ready it. for and, dessert. Right, and then when our salmon is, is cooked in 35 minutes, we'll pull it out. And in the meantime, we'd like to show you what our menu is today. And then come right back and join us. Things are moving along. We're going to have the pea and mint soup next, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I have salmon and vegetables cooked. And I will be making a simple salad uh, with a little bit of lemon juice, garlic, olive oil, put a little thyme in it, and everything's going on a bed of chopped carrots. So we are watching the end here. You do that so well. <laughs> all right. Still have all my fingers, so that's good. Now, we've moved along in this book. As I said, so many characters, so many characters, so many things to solve. And we are getting to the point where we're going to be talking about the the break-in, the, the dem, dem, demolition of a wall in the bookstore, over the bookstore in the village. Yeah, so there's, uh, and the, the theme of not everything is what it seems, um, there is a hidden, uh, a hidden room that becomes obvious to the woman engineer who understands the way things are built. So again, this theme of women who know things yes. <laughs> comes out. Um, and uh, also um, connections between bricks or things that could be, mil could be used to build things or to kill people. So, yes, we um, have all of that. Bricks return over and over in here. Um, so we've got the um, the experience of Gimanche and uh, Myrna, the bookstore owner, um, noticing because of the women engineers that the roof line is not as it seems, and there's a hidden room that they cannot resist. It is not into. as it seems. There's another theme of Gimanche. Yes. So what do they do? 
Well, they break in and they find um, what they at first think is the famous 17th century painting, the Pastone Treasure. Um, but then Clara, the, the town painter, recognizes that it can't possibly be the original and that it is a reproduction with um, uh, uniquely shaped details that slowly become clear to Armand Guimache that it, it, these are clues about him, about his family, about his past, and he begins to interpret it as a threat from the one person who knows him that well, and that is John Fleming. John Fleming, the and all of a sudden the reader says, where is oh, John no. Fleming yes, in all this? Absolutely. Where is he? And we wonder, who have we already met him? Is he here? And so everybody gets a little bit tense. I mean, I got really scared myself, and I was comfortable in Elkhart, Indiana. But, but. <laughs> so she keeps us guessing for sure. Oh, um, yes. So I'm putting some peas here. This is the um, mint and, um, I'll break this down a little bit, mint and, uh, and pea soup that could be served uh, cold or warm, um, chilled in this the book. This is great. Um, have a little broth We'll in have here. this recipe on our website. So, so if you just want some butter and leeks to start, and then we'll cook this down and then blend it. And then blend it. Well, you know, so they, they all go in there and look at this painting that is not really a painting, but and every time when they go back in, they see new things, depending on what's been revealed or what is going on. In the meantime, these two kids, they're kind of dashing around and, and, and getting into mischief, more than mischief. Yeah, so the damaged children from the murder that is the yeah. origin story for, um, for this book, for yeah. this book, begin to um, uh, be unreadable, as unreadable to Gimalsh and Beauvoir as it is to, to the reader. us, because mm -hmm. we know they have suffered, we know they are not quite safe in their own person, and uh, I particularly did not trust Sam at all, uh, but everybody seemed to trust him and not trust Fiona. So we have that going on as well. And, and actually they both go in to the house when everybody's not around. And that adds the other threat of what are they going to do? Yeah, so there's a there's a theme of hidden spaces as well. There's um, another theme, yeah, so, hidden spaces. So the children break into Ron Marie and, and Gimosh's house um, sort of like the three bears and do <laughs> just enough small damage, uh, spraying perfume, turning pictures. Um, pictures to the wall, just to let Gimosh know that he should be uh, Watch. aware. aware. And so, um, it is like being gaslit, yes. but he doesn't know for what purpose until the plot continues but to he build. never liked this young Sam. He was very leery of him. Uh, and that sort of sets up one aspect that this could go. But then we have so much untangling to do at the end. She just solves all this, wraps it up, and you're going, whoo, we aren't going to tell you what happens. No, but it did remind me of the ending of State of Terror, the, the spy oh. thriller that she co-wrote with Hillary Clinton that has that sort of um, barreling forward at the end with lots of things being resolved. So she keeps us guessing to the very to end. To the absolutely. page, you know, the last two pages. And why is that a format now? Are publishers saying, stretch it out, more pages, and wrap it up in three pages or two and be done with it? Well, it's possible it's the Netflixification of fiction <laughs> that Could things be. feel like they have to be drawn out. But I think Louise Penny is too good for that. So I, let me restate that. I would say she knows exactly what she's doing, which is to try to create a world of clutter and red herrings and dead ends, because this is what Gimosh is facing as he's in this emotional turmoil, being really manipulated by psychopathic killers. Yes, and he, you really, I. Even I haven't read very many of the books, but I could see he was really taken. He was really struck down. He was really worried. Uh, and uh, I kind of wanted to tell him, don't go in that room. Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, you know, his weakness is his strength, which yeah. is he loves children, he loves his family, and so the effective psychopath knows exactly how, how to, to get to him. Um, and so we see him really struggling. And this John Fleming has been studying him and his family for, I bet, 20 years. Absolutely. How am I going to 
get to him? How am I going to trap him in my web? And so this is the ending, this unraveling. And uh, it's he actually, in behind the scenes, John Fleming is putting all of his pawns in place on his chessboard. And he's going to make this move, and then this move, and this move. Down to the very minute. Clocks to, play yes, a role, mm -hmm. as it does on the cover. But slowly, something that seemed like sort of a benign aspect of the painting, um, the clock set at a certain time, it becomes clear. that something's going to happen. Something terrible is going to happen. So you see these, these details, they're, they're fascinating. They pull you in. But if somebody would ask you the next day to repeat everything that you just <laughs> read, you'd go, there was so much, I, I don't know. But the characters, when you read this, you have to look at the characters. You have right. to stay on point. You can't just throw it off and say, oh, well, I don't worry about him anymore. Because some of the most unlikely characters at the very end are the ones that we should take. I won't say. I, I promise. I yeah, will so not again, say. very much this this um, theme of the the Pastone treasure. Some of the details don't mean anything. Some of them come to mean a lot. And so I like that she uses that visual. Uh, she loves using art, and it's used quite creatively in this book. I would. It say. really is. She's an excellent writer, and I thought maybe I better. Boy, that smells absolutely delicious. Pull out this sheet pan salmon with vegetables. And these are always in, in recipe books and magazines. Ooh, here we go. Uh, so we have that done. My salad is ready to toss. And your soup is heating up. You have a flame there. Yes, I'm, I just turned it off. Okay. I'm going to blend it after I put in um, some uh, well, herbs you, here. But I think maybe I'll blend it I first. I think you have a, a couple, a minute or so to okay. do it. Yeah, great. Yes, look so at that. I'm going to man the cooling. These are wonderful, aren't they? They really are. As long as the container is deep enough. <laughs> Otherwise, it can be very exciting. And the so. kitchen can become very colorful. I think this is a, a bleaker, darker tail. I think that is absolutely accurate. Uh, it would be a, a hard one maybe to start with. On the other hand, um, it does stand alone. And it does stand alone and just kind of keep, I'd even make a list of people and put some identifiers. Uh, see, what I would do now is just put a slice of, uh, salmon on these carrots like this whoop turn that over and then surround them with the cooked vegetables and i think you'd have this at the bistro in town don't you oh absolutely that's beautiful maybe and, with a little soup as a start oh we'd start with your soup definitely <laughs> uh, yes la soup and then the first course and I just love the presentation. Thank you for suggesting this. Although I did not put any dressing in it. We are going to come back and finish in a few minutes. In the meantime, we want you to take a look at the list of 18 books that Louise Penny has written. Incredible. An incredible list, and we'll be right back. So April Ladinsky and I have finished the book. We have finished our cooking, and now we want to show you what we did, and we're going to have a little toast. <laughs> a very little one. Yes, so. to Louise Penny. To Louise Penny, no certainly. better mystery writer, right? Absolutely. She's great. So let's see what you have made over here. Talk so, about uh, it. A Canadian dish, uh, maple syrup and cinnamon um, stovetop pudding, absolutely delicious, and a uh, pea soup made with fresh mint that could be served chilled or warm. Absolutely delicious. And you did a little a, a trial leaf with your whipping cream. Of course, it's all mixed up now, but... A little swirl. A swirl, <laughs> swirl. And here is the roasted salmon with the roasted potatoes, onion, garlic, and Brussels sprouts. And we've served it on a bed of chopped carrots and here's our french salad made with lemon juice and a, and some oil and a little bit of garlic salt and pepper and here we go
This book is great. I loved it. I agree with you on Anne Lamarck. What a person. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for joining us today. And I want to thank you. Thank you. And we've got some uh, scotch whiskey and oh. licorice pipes to, to close. You'll see a picture of this, licorice pipes. So one of our, our Mon Kamash has a sweet tooth oh. as well as a sweet heart. And I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for joining us. Remember, good food, good friends, good books, good licorice, good soup, <laughs> everything makes for a very good life. Indeed. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you. Dinner and a Book is supported by the Rex and Alice A. Martin Foundation of Elkhart, celebrating the spirit of Alice Martin and her love of good food and good friends.